Today we celebrate the promotion of the commanding officer of the Special Pants Brigade. Hi everyone, welcome to today's badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. And I'm your co-host, Mike Williver. Today's video comes to us from Houston, Texas. Magtech is the only pistol or rifle ammo I use on the range and I recommend them highly. I've seen their manufacturing and quality control firsthand and it's incredible, which is why it always performs reliably and accurately. They are operating at max capacity and cranking out rounds for you to keep your skills sharp. Pick up some Magtech at your local ammo retailer or get it shipped fast at luckygunner.com. Houston PD have been doing some special patrols through this area to try to uh, find some burglary suspects. They had identified a guy, the guy that's on the right here at the bottom, and his girlfriend, but then they, those people ran away and skittered away like cockroaches and got away from the cops, so they kept looking for them. And you see here pulling in is a sergeant, in, Sergeant Valle, in an unmarked car, just looking to see if they can contact these guys again. Unfortunately, the answer to that is going to be yes. So you see the sergeant kind of pull up here and dude just walks over with a gun in his hand and starts opening fire, just goes to work, shoots a bunch of times. Here's a whole bunch more. You can see that the sergeant's kind of stuck in his car. I'm almost certain because of his seatbelt. Dude just totally nonchalantly walks over to the other side. That thankfully gives Sergeant Valle a chance to get his gun out and fill that crap bag in. See him then drop his gun. Now we have Sergeant Valle's badge cam and the badge cam of several other officers. Listen in on the audio here, man. It's a lot. Pull me a tourniquet, pull me a tourniquet. Tourniquet me up. He ran that way, Sal. He ran that way, Sal. Tourniquet me up. Hey, tourniquet me up. Tourniquet me. Give, give me Davis. Davis, turn to get me. Where'd you get hit? Both arms and legs. Get my legs. Turn to get me. Whoa. Was it him? Yes. Turn to get me. Hey, hey turn to get me. Diamond, hey. Hey. Guys. Diamond Hotel. His Guys, turn to get me. Black hoodie. Uh, tan Let's pants. Go. Hispanic male. Turn to get my both my legs. I dodged. I'm trying to kill my right arm, my right arm, my right arm. I got you, I got you, Sarge. All right, I shot him. He ran south down. He's wearing a black hoodie. Hey, get on the radio and sit. listen. Black hoodie okay. and gray and gray khaki pants, okay? Black hoodie, gray khaki pants, and he's been shot. He's been shot. He's been shot. Which way did he take off? Southbound. Southbound. Southbound through the Sally. There was a female with him. Get up high. Oh, right, guys, how's my, how's my bleeding? You're good, you're good. Northwest Maine. I've sped Officer Davis's badge worn cam, uh, body worn cam up. You can go watch the original if you want. Basically, they're gonna go offer uh, this dirt bag, CPR and all that stuff once they figure out that he is non-responsive. Uh, thankfully, in this case, and I mean that, thankfully, this guy, it was too late for him. Sergeant Valle had filled that dude in and he took the uh, grass temperature challenge. And again, nobody lamented his passing. Thankfully, Sergeant Valle spent several days in the hospital. He took one in the vest, he took one in each appendage. So both arms, both legs, but he's gonna make a full recovery. He's home recovering and hopes to get back out on the street pretty soon. I, I just really, Sergeant Valle, may God bless you, sir. What, what an absolute monster of a man. Commander Valle. Oh, I'm sorry, Commander, please. Forgive me, and, and sir, I know you are back home and recovering and itching to get back on the street from everything that I have read. Hats off to you, sir. We are praying for you to make a full and complete recovery and go back to protecting your community. I mean, I know we talk about pre-attack cues all the time, but I, I just don't think there's really anything that you are gonna do when you're just out investigating. I'm just looking to see if there are any goblins in the neighborhood, and I, you know, I'm gonna see one, but here in a matter of a second or so, he just shows up and starts opening fire. 
I, I think this is a reminder to all of my officer viewers that you are going to be behind in your gunfight. You have to expect to be behind because it's when the perp produces a weapon and, and starts using it that you are going to get into the gunfight and, and you're going to be behind, so you better be fast. John, this is a, excuse me, pretty classic case of a psychopath. This, this individual who did the shooting here is 100% a psychopath. And why do I say that? Because he saw this unmarked car coming in. He's been a criminal long enough to know that's probably an unmarked police car, so I want to scoot out of the way. He's looked through that window to see what kind of car that was. He then went and hid behind the truck to enable this officer to get even closer. And then he ran out and he, everything about his body language and his gait said, I need your help. I'm here to report something. I'm a witness, whatever. He ran over there with that sort of look waited for his moment and started pulling the trigger. He was so so not concerned with murdering this sergeant and so concerned with getting away, he's literally checking over his shoulder to see if other officers have seen him yet so that he can get away. Everything about his posture, everything about the way he shot so casually tells me this is a very, very, very bad person. Um, and as far as how the officer, the sergeant got stuck, yeah, could be the seatbelt. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit here. Yeah, and, and, and listen, I actually want to talk with you about this one, Mike, because you know, I, I I do know that from a statistical perspective, you're more likely as an officer to be injured in a motor vehicle accident than you are something like this to happen. So I don't want the severity of this to say, oh, I've got to change everything about what I do because of the statistical risks. But I do know that this is a reason that a lot of cops don't wear seatbelts. Yeah, I think in this situation particularly, it's late at night, you're in this industrial area, the, you're going at low speed, you're searching. I, honestly, we may disagree on this one, John. I think right here and now, this is where I'm, my seatbelt's coming off every time. As soon as I'm done and I'm now patrolling or driving or going you know, on the freeway or whatever, I'm gonna put it back on. I think, I think this is a good, a good case for having that off in the event that you do have to scoot. I know I used to, used to have a seatbelt extender in my, in my vehicle so that the actual release was up a little bit higher and I could get to it. I also made sure that my steering wheel, if it was telescopic and adjustable, I made sure that it was out of the way enough so that I could get my big fat butt with all my gear on out the door or roll out the door in the event that I had to. Look, I guarantee you the sergeant here is 100% squared away tactical guy in, in the truest sense of the word. And I mean that only in the best way. And I'm sure he has probably considered all these things as well. Some days you just do everything you can do, you do it as best you can, and you still get gotten. That's just what happened. Oh, he's a stud, no question. I mean, he's absolutely, you know, again, the commander of the Special Pants Brigade. I think a good reminder, maybe just spend five, 10 minutes, maybe once a week, five minutes, three minutes, just practicing swimming out of that seatbelt, practicing hitting it and swimming out of it as fast as you can. So then that way you kind of have that idea of, of a pathway that you know what you're doing, what most people would call muscle memory, right? So, so just to get out of that seatbelt and get away from it. Now, again, this guy just comes around as nonchalant as it gets, psychopathic as all get out. But thankfully his nonchalance, when he should be very chalant, he's not, and we're grateful for that, gives Sergeant Valle a chance to get his gun in the fight. And the reminder to me here, is the critical nature of emotional fitness. This man has taken a round in the vest, which is super painful in those soft vests. And he shot in both arms, and he shot in both legs, and yet he's not thinking about what just happened to him, but what does he need to do right now? That, th this is literally the ultimate example of emotional fitness to stay present in the moment, to say, I have a task to do, I'm still awake and aware, I still have capability, shot or not shot, I need to fill this dude in, and I, I, I just can't say enough superlative things about him. I, I would be shocked, I'm gonna go out and live here, I would be shocked if this sergeant wasn't a combat vet, or at least had been in the military and, you know, come close at the very least. This sort of calm, we say calm's a superpower, right? In this case, he is the, the king of calm. I've never seen anyone remain this calm under circumstances like this. He's been shot at least five times that we know of, he, you know, he doesn't know if backup's on the way. He, he just has to get out and deal with this. It's a good example of sometimes you see, you call the police for something, right? You have problem A and you call the cops and they show up and they're not doing the thing you want them to do right away. You're like, wait a minute, you're here. You should be doing this. Well, most people, this is time to just curl up in a ball and, and bleed to death. And this sergeant gets out and handles his and everyone else's business. Absolute, utter badass. Uh, if, if you're watching or any of his partners are watching, Hit me up. I would love to talk to you. Even if you don't want to come on the podcast, I would love to talk to you about this incident. This guy should go on a speaking tour after this, John. No kidding. I mean, the man should never buy himself another beer for the rest of his life. And I, I also want to say, you notice this so clearly, squared away guy. I mean, you look at him, physically fit as the day is long. 
Uh, obviously calm as the day is long. Look at, look at his technique as well. High level of tactics. This guy is, I mean, he's the model. I wish we had 10,000 of him, right? Th this is, is what we want to do. And proof to me that training matters, that, that if you take your training seriously, then you will rise to that level of your training on that day. And so people say they'll rise to the occasion. No, you will rise to the level that your training has brought you. John, you mentioned something earlier about him practicing swimming out of that, that seatbelt. Listen, if you don't think you need to practice pretty much every tactic available to you as often as you possibly can, consider an NFL lineman. They spend hours, hours every week after doing it their entire young lives from Pop Warner up until the time they're in their mid-20s every single week practicing the exact same drills over and over and over again. And they're the best in the world at these things and they still practice them constantly. So something like practicing getting out of your car, just find out, hey, can I in a pinch? Put me on a timer. Let me see what happens. How many, how many sim rounds can you get off in, you know, at my window before I can get out of this car? Take it seriously because this, again, you talk about a mental rep, probably the biggest mental rep other than you know, the, the attitude and training this officer clearly um, uh, it represents. The biggest mental rep here for me is, hey, what if I can't get out of my car in a hurry? I need to, I need to find out. Every time I get a new car that's a different make and model, I got to adjust my seatbelt. I got to adjust the steering wheel. Everything else I need to do to make sure I'm safe and I can get the heck out of that mobile coffin as quickly as possible. Yeah, and I think that that's a real good reminder here too. Remember, if that car is stationary, it's a coffin. And, and when it's moving, it can help you stay safe. But he's stuck in a spot here. He's taking fire on that case. When it's time to get out of the car, it's time to get out quickly. Incredible technique by him. Uh, great, great job of getting hits on target and ending that threat before he's able to, to, to really kill somebody. Now, listen, I'm just saying from this point forward, as he drops the gun and goes down, and I, I mean, I was heartbroken when we heard the, his first call, guys, come over here, I've been shot. And so first of all, incredible emotional fitness continuing. Second of all, I mean, this is why emotional fitness criti critically important, spiritual fitness critically important, that you've lived the life that you want to live and that you're like, nope, I have done my, my job. I have, I have run my course. And then, goodness sakes, Mike, I, I think running around wears a tourniquet, bro, you should have at least one on your person. Officers, hear me. You should have at least one on your person, if not two, at all times. Yeah, I think every officer, deputy, agent, no matter what you're doing, if you're carrying a badge and a gun, in the year of our Lord, 2023, moving into 2024 now, you absolutely have to have at least one tourniquet on you. We used to put them on our Molly gear just with a rubber band. They could rip them right off and put them, get them into service. But also get that training with a tourniquet. Don't just buy a tourniquet and throw it on your rig and call it good. You need to know how to use that thing. So if your department, if they're, if they're not doing their job training you properly and they don't give you proper training in, 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 uh, in first aid, tourniquet application, how to stop bleed, that sort of thing, look, you owe it to yourself and your partners and the people in your community to go out and get that training on your own. Spend the money, do what you gotta do, see if your church will help you pay for it, whatever. But that, that training is critically important. And the fact that this first officer is like, hey, where's your tourniquet? No, where's your tourniquet? Look, whatever tourniquet is closest by, please deploy that and put it on me. The problem with this sergeant is he's so incredibly studly and massive that it's hard to find a tourniquet enough to fit around his giant biceps. Yeah, and, and listen, as somebody, okay, so you know, I am a qualified instructor in trauma medical, and and listen, somebody's limbs are this big, you might need two. You might need two on each limb. Now, of course, you might be looking at the wounds and saying, okay, I don't see enough bleeding here that I need a tourniquet. That's true. However, our default is, if in doubt, if it makes you go, ew, Put the tourniquet on, it won't hurt the limb. You've got hours to worry about that. Get him to the hospital and let the ER doc look at it and then they can figure out what to do. As far as this perp, um, I, again, I, I just commend Houston PD because I, I would be completely so livid that I would want to put a whole bunch more bullets in this guy. So kudos to them for being men and women of integrity and doing what they can to save him. Uh, Sergeant Valle, our hat's off to you. You absolutely are hereby inaugurated as the commander of the Special Pants Brigade. sir. Anytime I can buy you a beer, you let me know. It's on me.